feel awful and you're getting out of bed to take care of stuff that they should be more than able to take care of. All right. And if they wanted to. Got you. And I, I've seen a conversation online that started with, I have narcissistic traits, but I'm not a narcissist. Is that possible? Okay. So everyone has a certain level of narcissism in them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, being narcissistic is what, uh, or having a self-interest is what makes us excel in what we do, you know, and makes us be more whole. Um, you know, if we didn't take care of ourselves at all, then who would we be? You know, so there has to be a certain level of, self-preservation, self-survival. Um, but there's a line, you know, there's a line to loving yourself. Uh, you know, and it's interesting because people that are wounded empaths, it's like they don't really learn how to love themselves. You know, empath or narcissists are really good at loving themselves, mm -hmm. you know? And so, yeah, there can be a fine line between, you know, having narcissistic traits and being, just really narcissistic, you know, because again, it's a spectrum, um, but it is for our self-interest to have some narcissistic traits. It's okay. when it, you can, when you're unwilling to compromise that they become, it becomes more of an issue, I think. Hmm. All right. So <clears throat> you mentioned earlier also, um, all right, so in regards to the dysfunctional dance of the empath and the narcissist, it's basically you're talking about that, that dance with, between the empath and the narcissist, right? Mm -hmm. um, what else can we look forward to finding in this uh, book as well? So the book is, you know, so it really talks about that dance, you know, what it is to be an empath, what it is to be a narcissist, what that dynamic is like, you know, more from the, you know, empath's point of view of looking at the relationship with a person that's a narcissist. So you can understand because I think many people don't really understand, you know, and so, and that was part of the journey to understanding. Um, but the book really does take a very, very, very hard look at what's going on inside of me. You know, why am I choosing to get in these relationships? What and why? You know, it looks at our own history. It causes us to take an evaluation of who we are, where we came from. And from that point, getting the opportunity to make some changes. In the book, does it touch on, because you, you were just talking about, like, if, because when a lot of times when you're growing up, it, it's, you know, if you keep getting to a toxic relationship more than likely it's going to be you that's the problem right however is is that always true though no i mean there ugh, how do i explain it um so there's two pieces you know one you could get in a relationship with someone who's a great person but because of your own junk, you know, you don't have any boundaries, you don't set any limits. And so now you've trained them to kind of ignore you. And, and ultimately in your mind, it's like, wow, they're really abusive to me, but you've trained them to be that way. Mm -hmm. um, but many times also, it's like you get into a relationship with someone who's just really not very good. Um, and so my point is, is that, it takes two to tango. See, that dance thing comes back up again. Yeah. And so we have to take responsibility for our part in the relationship and what we're bringing to the table or what we're not bringing to the table because you can't change something unless you understand what's wrong. Right. And you're saying one of the best ways to acknowledge if you're in those type of situations is when it's sometimes, sometimes it's a bad time in your life, whether, like you said, you're, if you're sick, because like you said, if it's a 70-30 deal and you're good with the 70, all right, cool, cool. I'm good with the 70. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you can't do something for whatever the reason may be and they don't 
it's not a 40, 60, or maybe even a 50, 50 during those periods of time where you need it and can't do it, then that's a, something you need to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I mean, I feel like that other person needs to be able to step up to the plate to the best of their ability. Right. There should yeah. be some type of adjustment. There should be right. some kind of an adjustment versus okay. um, nothing. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I think very, that's very, we, very little. I think that's where we um, where we get confused, but that's the first time that I've heard that perspective on it, that viewpoint. Where, all right, yeah, 70, I mean, because 70 30 could be good. Maybe that's how it's going to work. It's just 70 30. But when things, I think that's really big for us. It is really big. Know. I've never heard that before, actually. Never. Mm -hmm. ever. That's good. Um, I mean, and with that, you know, even if they're not able to, you know, so if it's 70 30, you know, and what they're able to do is throw in that extra 10 percent you know it's mm -hmm. like you know like i have all right one i've been married too many times you know so one of my husband was a, actually not a toxic relationship oh, God. and um you know but he didn't really cook you know so if i was laid up you know okay he didn't cook but he would go get food mm -hmm. you know he didn't just like be like ah. you know you're on your own because you're the food queen um you know, and so it worked out or, you know, when you're in a relationship, you know, you play on each other's strengths, you know, like I hate vacuuming. I mean, I hate vacuuming, <laughs> you know? And so, I mean, I, I'll clean a toilet before I'll vacuum any day, <laughs> you know? So if you're okay with vacuuming, I'm good with that. Cause I'll go clean a toilet. Cause I just, I don't know what it is about vacuuming. I just, um, you know, and so you, you, you know, compromise is just a really big part of it, you know, where you feel like your needs are getting met. And so in those situations where I was laid up and he went and got dinner, I felt like my needs were being met because now I didn't have to get up and go cook because he took care of it. So would it be safe to say, I've heard this as well on the topic of, you know, toxic relationships and, if someone's listening to this right now, someone listening to our conversation right now, and let's say they're in a relationship with a narcissist, what do you recommend for that person? They know for sure. They, they go out, they read the book. They're like, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm solidified. I'm definitely in this toxic relationship. What do I need to do next? Okay. You know, so one of the things that I learned, so this was one of my, one of my aha moments. And wait, it, before you go, is how do we connect with you? Maybe someone also wants to come to you in private. Um, how mm -hmm. do we can connect with you? Your website, do you have an email, you have social media? How can we connect with you before you uh, share with us that? Okay, so now I just forgot the question, but that's okay. I'll bring uh, it back. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so my website is soulhealer.com, S-O-U-L-H-E-A-L-E-R.com, soulhealer.com. You can find me on Facebook, Dr. Reed Louise on Facebook, and I am Psychic Doc on Twitter. Okay, excellent. So again, the question was, if you're in, you, I, I just finished reading The Dysfunctional Dance of the Empath and Narcissist, and right before I read the book, I actually listened to this conversation, right? And mm -hmm. I'm in this toxic relationship. And some people say, you know what? You shouldn't tell a narcissist that they're a narcissist. Some people say you should. What do I need to do now? What are my next steps? Okay. So I think the first step, you know, once you come to that realization is, is this something that you want to do for the rest of your life? You know, and I was saying you know, before we went to the whole website thing, um, you know, one of the things that I learned is that it's our job to make ourselves happy. And so if you spend more days unhappy, or as I said earlier, walking around on eggshells and just not really sure what you can or should do, then you might consider, do I want to stay? And for some people, that's a really hard scenario to work through, you know, whether you have children, you know, young children, uh, you're not in a financial situation to make that happen. Um, or you might be in a situation where your partner is very abusive and you're scared for your own safety to go. 
But again, that decision needs to be made because there are countless people that will stay in an unhealthy situation just because they're too afraid to go. You know, I had a client once, well, it wasn't a client. It was this woman who got a reading at a fair and she wanted to know when her husband was going to pass away. Mm. And so, you know, I asked, I mean, cause I can like look at different people's energy and I'm like, well, he doesn't seem sick. I mean, cause I have people that come and it's like, you know, my mom is 83. She's not doing real well. You know, do you think she's going to make it? I will respond to that kind of question, you know, because there's eminence to it. But I'm looking at this person and they seem fine. You know, like there wasn't anything wrong with them. And bottom line, she didn't want to divorce him. She hated him, Mm. but didn't want to divorce him because she didn't want to give up her stuff. You know, and so there are a lot of people that will stay in a situation that they're not happy because they don't want to give up their stuff. They don't want to give up the lifestyle in which they become accustomed, et cetera. Um, You know, but if you make that choice, if you make the choice to stay, then it's just going to be more of the same because they're really not going to change. You can suggest counseling, but, you know, they can just lie to the counselor and make you be the bad guy. Mm. It can happen. Um, You know, if you choose to go then you really need to come up with an exit strategy, you know, and look at where you are in that moment, you know, financially, can you make that happen? Um, You know, where you're living, is it your house? Is it their house? You know, can you, you know, there's just a whole process of just really defining because everybody is in a different situation um, based on what's going on. And, just really coming up with a plan to take that next step is the most important part. Mm. So asking yourself, is this something that I want to do for the rest of my life? Number two, coming up with an exit strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's fair enough. Um, And this is, and in regards to a dysfunctional family, uh, what is, uh, what's a plan of action for that? I mean, are we, contacting child services. I mean, you have a 14, 15 year old that may be listening to this show. They're in a a toxic, uh, dysfunctional family. I mean, do you go to a a trusted family member? What do you do for that, that 15 or 14 year old that's in a a dysfunctional family? Um, Yeah. I mean, reaching out to someone that can be your advocate, you know, I mean, in every family, there is always going to be something, you know, parents are going to get upset with you, you know, they might yell at you, but if that's your basic life, you know, then maybe saying something is very important. I mean, if there's physical abuse, if there's sexual abuse, then reaching out to someone is really important. You know, and I I, I don't even like saying these words, but if you're in a situation where there is a lot of physical violence happening and you reach out to a priest or a family relative, and now you just spill the beans on what's going on in the family dynamic, you know, there could be repercussions Mm. that happen because of that, which, you know, I don't even like saying that, but that really is the truth of the matter. And so if it's a really bad situation, then you need to really convey the urgency of, I'm telling you, but if they find out, um, I need to be taken out of this situation. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. So we got dysfunctional family, toxic relationship, narcissist, empath. Um, We got the book. We'll definitely put the, uh, the book details in the show notes. Biggest thing for me was definitely, you know, if someone is in a narcissistic relationship right now, what are two things they need to ask themselves? I think that first question, the first of the two steps you gave us, is this something I want to do for the rest of my life? I think that's a huge question. It's huge. Because it separates you from the relationship and just look at it uh, through its totality. So I thought that that was really big. Um, do you have any, 
anything that maybe I should have asked or anything that you need to share with us before we wrap up? Um, 